All right, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on when you are watching this. Here we go again with another lesson, and this one is lesson number 11, if you're following along on the series here on YouTube. And we've had the first 10 up, and now this is number 11, and this one is called Master Yourself. And actually, this is really, really a crucial one for success. You have to be able to master yourself. But before we get into the meat of that, which we will, it's so important to have the foundation that we've been working on from all the other lessons. So remember, our first one was on forgiveness, which frees us, detoxes us, it cleans us all out. And then the second one was getting alone with God daily, which you'll hear me talk about a lot because it's really important. We have to be able to hear God's voice and have him help us and guide us along the way. Then for the third one, we had getting your mind right and in alignment with God, right? We want to always be in alignment with God. Then we had defining and getting our core values and keep those in line with God and his words so that we can make correct choices and, of course, do our best part and have the best motives and do what we're supposed to do. We had creating a powerful vision and another video for ourselves and the passion and awaken to our calling. And that's God's calling for us. And then after all of that, then we had to speak the love language of heaven. The language of heaven. And it actually turns out to be a love language because if you love God, you will have your faith. And faith, believing in God. That's really one of the things you must have. If you have faith, mountains will move. And once we've come this far, and then we can find our way. So remember, God is directing that way, right? And we can raise our standard as well. So those are the past lessons, and they all have one common thread. And that is in every single one, we align, you'll always see me do this, align ourselves with God and God's word. God is there for us each step of the way, as you all know, but we've got to do our part. Very important. It's not always going to be easy. We said that already, but we've got to keep marching on. Even when it's hard, there is God. And that's why we practice the previous lessons. That's why we want to make sure we have a firm foundation. So with all that foundation now laid down, we're going to build on that. And then here comes our next step. And the next step is mastering yourself. So what does that mean exactly? What are we talking about? Well, it's getting a grip is what it's doing. Mastering ourself is about having self discipline and it's not just following the crowd remember or taking the easy way because that is not going to be mastering yourself and here in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 Jesus himself has said this very thing I'm going to read to you he says enter through the narrow gate hmm for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small or narrow is the gate that leads to life, and only a few find it. So we cannot just follow the crowd. That's the wide, the wide space, the big gate. Do not just follow the crowd. Each one of us has to get a grip for him or herself and master oneself. 
self-discipline. Follow what's right, even when it's difficult. And like the Bible tells us, and it warns us, it tells us this in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken, broken down and without walls. So you have to remember, why did God use this description? So, well, back in the day, the cities were built. They had walls and gates all around them to protect them, of course, from their enemies and to keep the bad people out, to keep the enemy out. So without a wall and something that's broken down, with a broken down wall, anything and everything could get in. And that's like us, right? Without getting a grip and having self-discipline, we leave ourselves wide open to anything and everything. And that can get in. Things can creep on in. Things can even walk on in. And once that happens, then you have little to no protection. And then we can get pulled over here, pulled over there. We get off the path completely. And then we stray and we get lost. So here we're on the path for our marathon. We're running this marathon of success, right? So we're on the path for the marathon. Like in a race, you're on the path. You're on the racetrack. You're going and going, right? Think about a runner on a track. In a race, right? A person running a marathon, the track or the path, but the road is clear. The road is clear. No holes to fall into or things to trip on or branches in the road. It's clear and you can run. So I'm going to give you a little example here of what I'm talking about. So I used to always run 5Ks. I liked it. I just enjoyed it. It was usually the color run, you know, something fun. But once in a while, right, I used to always go back. If this, this time of year or this time of year, I'd go and do it. There were lots of people, lots of people doing this. And there were young people and old people and families and kids and moms with strollers. There were a lot of people. But. We had a path laid out. We had a road to follow. And that road was kept clear. Even if there were many people, the road was clear so that we could all move forward. We could all keep going. And if you wanted to go around someone, you could. I mean, it was okay. And that's because the path was clear. So if somebody was a little bit too slow in front of me, you zip around because there was nothing to get in your way. So you want to stay on the path, get a grip, have a self-discipline. And that reminded me of my son, Richard, who used to run track. I found this booklet the other day um, from his track event. And the track, it showed a picture of how the track, the track was clear. There's no, and nothing blocking it, right? So that's with us in life. If we do not roll over our own spirit, then we're going to have obstacles. Things are going to be in your way that will come in. We're letting them in. We need to keep the self-discipline to protect the marathon and to protect us. Self-discipline is unifying both the body and the mind. You have to have both together towards a specific goal or purpose. And then you're running to the finish line. And then when you get your trophy or your medal, woo! -hoo! If we are self-disciplined in our body, then our mind will be at ease too. And we don't have to feel bad about what we did or what we didn't do. Because why? Because the road is clear. So we're going to take a look here in 
you know it, Blessed and Unstoppable, Dr. Billy Allsbrooks. And we're going to read this first paragraph and see what he has to say here. First of all, of course, there's a Bible verse that we start with. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down. We just talked about this. And without walls. Proverbs 25, chapter 25 and verse 28. And now we're going to go ahead with our first paragraph where he says, Self-discipline is unifying the body and mind towards a specific goal or purpose. Mind and body are working together towards a purpose. On your road to victory, your first objective is to conquer yourself. Whether you desire to have a sculpted body or start a ministry or play professional sports, move up the corporate ladder or become a millionaire, self Discipline is an essential ingredient to all success. Nothing of great achievement can be achieved without it. You're not going to get anywhere without self-discipline. So we're reading that that's very important, right? It gets us to the goal. It gets us there on purpose. We get to the finish line if we have self-discipline. So the first step and the first objective before you even reach the goal is to conquer yourself and have self-discipline. It's the essential ingredient to all success. You have to have it. Without self-discipline, you're not going to go anywhere. All right, in paragraph two, what does it say? What you do consistently will eventually become. Your habits, rituals, and routines must be congruent with the goals and outcomes you wish to accomplish. One by one, you must overcome the daily temptations that stand against your dreams. You have to stand up for yourself. Stand up towards these things that are trying to hurt your dreams and your plans. Self-discipline is sacrificing the short-term benefits for a bigger and greater desired outcome. It's a loud declaration to the universe that says, what I want to achieve is more important to me than the immediate gratification of the things that prevent me from it. So, that was quite a chapter. But here we see that you have to overcome temptation and overcome the immediate pleasure for the better, right, for the greater desired outcome. Let me use a, a little example. It has been summer break. We're almost done with summer break because, I, you know, I teach school, and we're almost done with summer break. But during summer break, we, you know I'm a teacher. I just told you that. So technically, because the way my pay goes, I could be completely off during the summer. I could just do whatever I want to do. But I chose a goal, and my goal was to pay off my debts so that later then I can breathe because money isn't going out to different things. I want to get debt free, get my emergency fund set up, like I tell you, and be set, but be better than I am right now. So here's what I did. Those are my goals. Now, I applied for a summer job this summer, and I got the summer job. I did get it. And the job means getting up, not sleeping in. I have to work five hours. I'm there five and a half, half hour courses lunch. So I'm working five hours each day. And it is not always the easiest job. It's not hard, but sometimes it's, you know, it's just you're tired. And it is a job and I do get tired and I don't want to run right out, you know, and go do something. But I am also going to make sure I go to work and I keep my self-discipline and do my best. And when I do that, my bills are going to get paid off because I'll get a nice little check. So I've got to keep a budget also. And that's not fun. Pay off the bills. Not fun at the moment. But seeing a goal and a purpose in sight. There is success there waiting. 
So I got to keep my road clear. I have to stay focused and self-disciplined. Run my marathon. Win the medal. I got to be on it. And I have to be consistent. I mean, you just run this marathon and stop and then wait a week and then go run it again. You have to be consistent. And then when we do that, you eventually become, like in my case, I'll become debt free. You'll have whatever goal it is that you want. But immediate gratification for me in the summer could mean sleeping in, doing what I want, eating out at times when places are open or were open, and just relax. But then I won't become debt free. Or even with my marathon that I'm on here. And I want my medal at the end of the marathon. All right. So we are making some sacrifices here. What you hang around with, you know, you will become. So you have to be careful what you're doing there. Must overcome temptation. We just said all that. Now, our next paragraph says the following. Champions know that winning is a process. They indoctrinate themselves in a strict regimen that facilitates massive success. In a game of life, there's no shortcuts. Sorry, there's no shortcuts. Or there's no participation trophies. Championships are not just handed out and inherited. They have to be literally taken with hard work. Gotta work hard. So, champions know that winning is a process, step by step. So, this won't happen all at once. Not going to all just fall into your lap. So, in order to win, there has to be a strict regimen. And that means not a sometimes regimen, but a regimen, a routine, a stick-to-it result and mindset. Got to do it. Got to do it. No shortcuts, no days off. And then we said, well, why is that? Why can't we just do whatever, have a day? Because if we get too off the schedule, then it's too easy to stay off the schedule. They're going backwards, fall off the path, fall off the track. We're doing so well that we might as well go forward. We don't want to start going the other direction. And now what if you do fall off the track? What happens? Well, that's why we had our previous lessons, right? In our foundations. If you fall off your track, you already know that God is going to go and be with you, right? You fall off the track or off your road, or you get mixed up, you fall off, you already know that God, you got to go to God and tell him, and tell him you're sorry. Because he's going to then forgive you. If he sees you're sincere, you're okay. And also remember here, forgive yourself. We're on our track, we're going through our process, we're getting back into the swing of things, if we make a mistake, we're going to just keep on going again. Start running. And this may even happen a few times, but you got to keep going and God asking forgiveness, still working on whatever it is you're working on. So here it is. It's like a parent. All right. If you have kids or if you know anybody, of course, it probably doesn't you do. Hmm. Like a parent. Our kids do something wrong. Do we throw them out? Do we just throw the kids away because they, they didn't do the right thing? No. We forgive them. We make a correction. And then go again to restore and to help and to guide them because you're teaching them. The kids learn and then the kids move on. And that's how we go on our race. So this is God is in the midst. We're running. He knows what's going on. 
keep going because it is a process and he knows you're going to make mistakes. What if the race is a long one though? Well, do we only wait till the very end for the medal and that's it? Oh, yay. Well, you can, if you have self-discipline, you can reward yourself in a small way, not just wait for a medal. So here you go. Say you pay off a bill and you pay that bill in full. And then you have two more. So we've got three bills going on here, right? Do you go have a huge expensive meal if you pay one off? Or you pay off all three? Probably not. But you can have a smaller treat. You can buy a coffee or relax at the coffee shop. Get a small meal or a dinner, right? So you can reward yourself in the small things in small ways as you make these little strides forward. So a small reward may be necessary to mark the achievement. Like, you know, when you get a drink of water and you're running a race and they have these little water stations, like you're rewarding these little, little. So you're not guzzling. And that's what we're doing here. Little step, little step, little step. Have the self-discipline accomplished. Reward yourself. Next one, have the discipline accomplish. Reward yourself. So there are, you know, ways that you want to keep yourself motivated, of course. And here he says, self-mastery cannot be outsourced. It's a choice that only you can make. I can't make it for you because it's self discipline self mastery the price of victory must be paid with sweat day in and day out gaining control over oneself is the most challenging of all achievements but it's also the most rewarding so success he says requires restraint willpower and total mind control. Bringing yourself under total submission is not going to be easy. But your destiny depends on it. So here we see that no one else, no, nobody can do this for you. I can't do this for you. Your sister, brother, mother, lady down the street can't do it for you. This is all about self-mastery. And not someone else mastering it for me, for example. If that were the case, we never get back. We never learn. And all victories would be hollow. Gaining control over oneself is challenging. It can be difficult. But yet, the most rewarding. And that's because, you know, you did it. That's the most rewarding. You did it. You can be proud of yourself. You can sit up a little straighter because you did it. You didn't follow the crowd. You did what you're supposed to do. Gaining control over oneself is challenging, but most rewarding, right? And you can be proud of yourself. So that's a good thing. Your win is going to be your win. And you do this for you, not for everybody around you. This has got to be a for you thing. So I'm going to tell you something. It's like the house that I bought out here. I bought this house and it was all green inside. This kind of pistachioed called green, I think they call it. The whole, the whole house. So I could have hired people to paint it, right? But I did the whole inside. Now, I didn't do one of the rooms, which was where my son had been staying before he went back to California, but I didn't do that room. He did that, and his girl did that, so I left that part alone. But one year later, I finished the whole house, and this is not a little house. So I am proud of me, so I can look at my house and be proud. And it wasn't always easy. But I had to have the self-discipline to do it, or I still would have green walls. So it's the same thing with all the other goals. 
You don't want to outsource it because nobody can do it but you anyway. Nine times out of ten, you well, take away the feeling of I did it. I am proud of me because you didn't have other people doing it for you. Once in a while, you might have to get some help. I get, I get, but you're mastering yourself. You're having self-discipline here. Okay, let's see what's our next paragraph. Greatness is in you, but you must make sacrifices to access it. Devotion is the difference between being mediocre and becoming a legend. For real champions, real champions, no excuse is acceptable. It's not like school. You ain't got a note from your mom to say why you were sick. You're, you're, for real champions, no excuse is acceptable. If you are of average talent, self-discipline must, must become your weapon. Determination, dedication, total commitment are the great equalizers. And your willingness to outwork and outgrind the competition will make all the difference. Be the best one there. You have to be the best one. That's actually one of my favorite, my favorite paragraphs. One says, um, here we're talking about we got to keep our self-discipline, right? Make sacrifices. You don't want to be mediocre. It has to be your weapon. The self-discipline becomes your weapon, right? So I'll remind you, greatness is in you. We've said it a couple times now, but I say it again. Greatness is in you. And keep saying that or, or write it down and look at it. But greatness is in you. And that's so encouraging. And God gives us a Bible verse. It's in Psalms 193. Or I'm sorry, 139. I'm backwards. Sorry, I read that wrong. Psalm 139. It's one of my favorite. I don't know why I would say it wrong. Psalm 139, and it's verses 13 and 14. And it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So God knows then there is greatness in us. Because he put it in there. But we're the ones that must access it. We have to access the greatness. We have to do something. And right now, I'm going to do something. Hold on a second. I'm going to close the door. We have a little chattery dog here. Let us get this close. There we go. I did not leave you. It looks like I left you, but here I am again. All right. So, we have to have that self. This is all about mastering ourselves, having that self-discipline, right? Times aren't going to be easy, but God put the greatness in you. Remember, remember, we have to do something. We have to make the effort. We have to make the sacrifice. There's no excuses, no days off. Be devoted. Be self-disciplined enough to get the greatness out. Right? Keep running the marathon. Keep staying on your path. Letting nothing in the way. So you can just keep continuing all the way and all the way to the finish line. A willingness to keep going makes all the difference. Keep on going. Self-discipline. self Mastery. All right, let's see what else it says here. People who have no authority over themselves are unfit for leadership. You can't be a leader if you can't discipline yourself. Success avoids the undisciplined like the plague. So if you are serious about being successful in life, start cultivating a lifestyle of structure and self control right now. Stop being a slave to your flesh. Stop letting your thoughts get the best of you. A lot of us have that 
battlefield going on, right? This battlefield in there, the thoughts going back and forth. And once and for all, crown yourself master. Stay focused. Be the master. Stay focused. Tap into your why. Why are you doing all of this stuff? And keep your goals in front of you. It's time for you to arise and do what it takes to become the person God designed you to be. So people without discipline then don't make it to leadership. We just said that. Think about that. If you're not self-disciplined, no leadership skills there. If anybody does get to the top, or say, well, I've known people who are not self-disciplined and they've made it to the top. But how long did that last? Success is going to avoid those that are undisciplined. And why is that? Why won't God just give us success? I mean, he could do it. But see, it's like a kid, a little child that's bad. They misbehave. And when they disbehave, when they misbehave like that, do you reward them at your house? So oh, that was great. Oh, don't worry about it. No. Do you listen to their whining? No. So unless that child gets back on the right path and truly tries, you're not going to reward them. So we as parents do not reward bad behavior. And success will not reward us if there's no discipline. So put your why out in front of you, why you're doing this. Keep your goals in front of you. And then, most importantly, keep the self-discipline and stay on the path. Looking ahead, not behind. You can't run your race looking over there. Your goal is up front there. Really important. God designed each one of us for greatness. So run this marathon and win. Win with a tool of self-discipline. So self-discipline is crucial here. And our positive affirmation says, I bring every area of my life into submission. I walk at the highest level of self-discipline, consistently doing what it takes to be successful. Today, I make a vow to conquer myself. Try to conquer yourself. Now, let's see what the questions are, because sometimes that opens our eyes even more, right? Says, why do I want the things I want in life? So why do you want these? For what reason? What are the daily habits and rituals needed to achieve my goals? What must you do every single day in order to achieve your goal? And how can I begin to implement these into my life? The next one. In what areas of my life am I already showing self-discipline? And what are some of the daily things that successful people do? What will I feel like when I achieve my goals? What will my body look like if I exercise and eat the way I should? What kind of financial benefits would I enjoy by bringing my spending under control? See, that would be a self-discipline. If you don't want to do impulse buys, you know how we just something, oh, that's cute, you grab it. How bad do you want to be successful? Am I willing to commit to a life of greatness? What one thing can I start, just start today, to cultivate a lifestyle of self-discipline? What's one thing you can do today? And how far in life can I really go if I conquer myself? Then here, who are some of the great legends 
the best represent hard work and self-discipline. Now, today's prayer is going to be, Father, thank you for giving me the strength to overcome myself. Help me to cultivate a life of structure and self-discipline. Thank you for giving me the power to bring my mind and flesh under total submission. In Jesus' name. You want to submit to God and be self-disciplined. And that way you'll find your way. All right, here's some success quotes. In reading the lives of great men, I found that the first victory they won was over themselves. Self-discipline with all of them came first. And that was written here by Harry S. Woman. Now we have another one. This is by Napoleon Hill, and he says the following. Self-discipline begins with the mastery of your thoughts. It starts up here. If you don't control what you think, then you can't control what you do. Simply, self-discipline enables you to think first and act afterward. That's quite, quite a statement there. Charles F. Glassman writes the following. Self-discipline is often disguised as short-term pain, which often leads to long-term gains. The mistake many of us make is the need and want for short-term gains. We want immediate gratification, which often then leads to long-term pain. And one more. For a man to conquer himself is the first and noblest of all victories, and that is Plato. So a lot of famous people are talking about self-discipline and urging you to have self-discipline, urging me as well. All right, let's see what our action steps are. Now, these are practical action steps. So if you want to watch the videos, I will always have them in there. If you have to stop it and write it down, start it, stop, then do that because the action steps are usually your assignment that just is very, very good. Number one, let your goals, values, and principles dictate your actions instead of your feelings and emotions. So detoxing emotionally will increase your self-control. Ask this question. Is what I'm about to do move me towards my goal or does it move me away from my goal? Make sure you have a strong enough why for whatever it is you wish to accomplish. If you're having trouble staying disciplined, your why needs to be re-examined. Right, so why are you doing this? Why are you trying to be successful? Why are you doing what you're doing? You want a good solid why. And then get in motion. Motion creates energy, momentum, and power. So you don't want to just be sitting around watching TV, just kind of chilling. No. Set up self discipline systems for the times of day you're most tempted to slip up. So what can you do to help yourself from slipping up? And he says, a person who is plugged into their calling, who knows their why, and is engaged in doing their passion, is less likely to lose focus. If it's something you like to do. You are going to put your all into it, like with the blinders on, following God's will and his, his purpose and his plan for your life. All of those things go hand in hand. Talk to God, be alone with him every day. All those things we need. So it says here, do not be deceived by your current struggles. Because we all have current struggles, right? God has an amazing plan for you. God has an amazing plan for you. All you need to do is trust and just keep little, if it's got to be baby steps moving forward, that's okay, but move forward. Don't stay stagnant. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we just come before you once again, and we just ask you to help us with our self 
discipline, making sure that we're doing your will and your way and working towards our, our goal, our successful goals. So help us to stay self-disciplined so we can do that. We have self -made. Lord, we do invite you into our lives today. Come on in, Holy Spirit. Come on in, Lord. We know that you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. We believe that. We need forgiveness for our sins. So please, Julia, please. Just watch over us and guide us as we go. And for everyone watching, Lord, just touch them in the mighty and powerful way. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. So we, that was, we just finished. I have to look. Number 11. So there are, will be 11 of these studies up for you to check. Share with your friends. Please share it. Please hit like and subscribe. That would really help tremendously for Little Lighthouse Ministries. That's the YouTube channel, Little Lighthouse Ministries. You want to share, tell people to watch, um, go ahead and, you know, thumbs up kind of thing, like, like, I like this, and subscribe. If you're subscribing to my channel, then you'll get to see the previous lessons as well as the one, for example, we just did. There are more coming because I'm ahead in the live videos on Facebook. So that's why I'm hesitating and trying to think of what, where but um every wednesday at eight i'll go over this stuff live not on here right away and then what i'm doing is gradually getting caught up so we just did number 11 here but if you go and watch me live it'll be like on 17 or 18 so we're not exactly even but that's okay take your time and you will be successful if you focus and do what it says to do. Master yourself. Self-discipline. In the meantime, aloha nui loa, which means love you much, very much. So glad you're here. And then mahalo nui loa. Thank you very much. So that's everything for today. But if you do have a prayer request or a need and want to reach me, it's going to be Little Lighthouse Ministries 7 at gmail.com. So the name just like YouTube, Little Lighthouse Ministries, but seven. I put a seven there. And that'll be to email me. Okay. Check out everything that you possibly can on YouTube. And we'll keep this going for quite a while. I think there's 31 lessons and we are not, well, we're just slightly over half. So we're going to stay self-disciplined. Run this marathon. Win the prize. Yay! You can do it. You can do it. Okay. So aloha nui loa. Mahalo nui loa. And every Wednesday... From 8 to 9, I will be live on Facebook with a message here from Tuesday is always Hula from 7 to 7.30, 7.45 to 8.15 is Tahitian. So you can tune in and watch and maybe learn a little at the same time. Get up and try it. It's great exercise. All right. I'm going to get off of here before I think of something else because I usually do. So I will not at this point. I thank everybody, mahalo nui loa, and I will see you in the next video. Okay. Bye for now.